in the law. The law doesn't allow you to use the fact that you were drunk as a defense of what you did while you were drunk. You're the one that brought yourself to the point of intoxication. And so therefore you are still responsible for the deeds that you took while you were in that state. So getting drunk and then going out and killing somebody while uh, you're driving, you cannot use being drunk as a defense. Okay? But think about what getting drunk does. It, that itself is a trap that the devil lays for people. Okay? It is a gin, gin. That's a joke. Dun -dun -dun. Okay? So let's get into it. Psalms 142. You can turn to all these. Look at them on the screen. I, I want to encourage you to do your own study. Because this is, this is how your life has been and is going to be. For the rest of it. For the rest of it. People get in all kinds of snares and traps. People get started, people get started on, on cigarettes at a young age. People get started on, on alcohol at a young age. Um, people get, get started uh, with fornication at a young age. The devil lays out these traps to get you in them and to and to hold and to hold you in bondage. And, and and I know this on the screen, I mean, may not be something you like to look at, but that's that's reality. So, and Psalm 142, verse 3 will describe what this is. Brother, Brother George, if he was here tonight, he would, he would tell you that there's a difference. And I, I can't remember exactly what he said, so I'll probably get it wrong. But let me show you what the Bible says. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. It, now, think about that. Right now, when you get in your, when you get ready to leave here, m some of you, your phone will tell you how long it's going to take for you to get to your house. Why is that? They know where you live. And they know that there's a 99% chance you're going home from here when you leave here. Unless you, unless you told somebody, in a conversation that you were going to, going to Walmart after church. And I guarantee it's listening. Okay. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. And I can tell you, this week, I've had times when my spirit was overwhelmed. Okay. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me? Now, here's what the Bible's telling you about a snare. Uh, when you, who's ever built a rabbit trap, a box rabbit trap? And, you, anybody? But you've seen one, right? Build a box and put a carrot in there or something like that. Some kind of food to draw the rabbit into the box. And he doesn't know it. But when he touches that little piece of wood dangling from a string, it releases the cage behind him and he's, and he's trapped. Okay, that's not what this is. In that kind of in that kind of snare, you were lured in by what you like. If you want to, if you want a rabbit 
in that box. Don't put a fish in there. They don't, or a can of tuna, they won't eat it. You, you'll end up with a raccoon. Okay? But you won't end up with a rabbit. Okay? Or a possum. Anyway. But this, in this case here, the devil knows that you have a, a way about you. And he knows you. And he knows, now you listen to this, he knows that when you get overwhelmed, when you get in pain, when you, when you get angry, whatever, whatever trips your trigger, the devil knows it. And he says, I know where he's going. I know what he's going to do. And he lays a trap for you and boom, you're caught. Why? Because he knows you. He knows you. Okay? He knows everything about you. Um, so that's, that's what that is. So think about the ways that you have in your life. And when you get tired of getting caught in that snare, have God help you change your ways. Change your path. Walk a different course. Let God lead you in a different way. Amen? Proverbs 6, and these, this goes along with that. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Your own mouth can get you caught in a trap. Amen? In fact, there's, there was three verses. There's more, I think probably more than that, but I thought I got to move on. Proverbs 12, 13, the wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips. But the just shall come out of trouble. So you know what that means? Shut up. Shut up every now and then. Don't say things that you're going to regret saying because you are going to, it's going to catch up to you. Okay? There's a, there's a guy I follow on, on YouTube. I'm not going to say his name. Uh, I, I like the stories he tells. He is a former mobster and, and a true Sicilian, Italian, mafioso. Um, he is a true... Um, what's, I, I can't think of things today. I don't know why. But anyway, um, he got into, got into movie production and fell in love with some of the dancers, one of the dancers that he hired for a movie and, uh, got married to her and she said she was a Christian and she started getting him reading his Bible and so on. He ended up doing about 10 years in prison. And and several a long time of it was spent in solitary. And so he said it was just me and my Bible and God for a long time. And he claims to be a Christian. Now, it is not my place to judge this man. I, I like him. And I like some of the things he says. And I'm hoping and praying that he really has changed his life. But every now and then you can hear it, a, a curse word will slip. Okay, now do do guys in the mafia do they curse? Okay, yes they do. Do people in the army or navy? Do people on construction sites? Okay, they curse a lot, and when you pick up that it is a habit. It is a habit. And some people can't talk a sentence without a curse word in it. 
Lying is part of this as well. Some people just lie and they do it well. And that is a snare. Definitely lying is a snare. Definitely. Lying is a snare. Because you will always get caught in that trap. You'll tell a lie and then you'll be like David. You'll have to start doing things to cover the lie up. Okay? Don't get caught up in lying and making stuff up and telling stories that are not true. Don't do that. Um, Proverbs 18, 7, A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. Now, I believe James is right. James is, when he talks about the tongue, he said it's a flame. And... Um, uh, what was I going to say? I don't know. But anyway, I, okay, I believe that, and this is what Jesus was talking about, what, pro, what defiles a man is what comes out of a man. And what comes out of a man in one place is his mouth. And you can be a liar, you can be uh, uh, an arrogant person full of pride that'll come out of your mouth um, bad education learning I, I uh, grew up with a with a young man I grew up with a boy and we went to Twin City Christian Academy together and then we graduated Festus High School same day and we were, we were buddies for several years. Him and his family, faithful members over at Second Baptist. And we met up, or I called him one time about a, I'd say probably six to eight months after we had started school. I started Bible college. He was down in Arkansas going to a university down there. And I called and talked to him a little bit. And he just flat out told me, he said, I'm taking a course in philosophy and I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know that I believe in God anymore. Now he had supposedly gotten saved, baptized over there. And I hooked up with him on Facebook a couple years ago. I went looking for old friends, you know, and I'm very discouraged. Because he's still that way. His, what's in his heart came out of his mouth. His education. Bad education. He believed what he was told in that place. And it came out of his mouth. And it's a snare. Sister, I'll be honest with you. I, I think it goes along with what I just said. It is in their heart. And when it's in your heart, you can't, help, you can't help it. What you need is a change of heart. And only God can do that. A psychiatrist can't do it. There's no medicine for it. Only God can change a person's heart. And like you're describing someone who would lie... When you're standing there and you know for a fact they're lying and they're going to do it anyway. Okay? That's because it's in their heart. Uh, yep. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And it's a snare to him. He's putting himself in a trap every time he does. Okay? Um... Now let's look at this, Ecclesiastes 9. What is this? A net. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. A net is a trap. 
Okay, it's it traps fish, or you can trap animals with it. Okay, but I want you to look at this verse and and look how Solomon described the net. Ecclesiastes nine twelve. For man also knoweth not his time. Who in here knows when you're going to die? Nobody does. Except for maybe a man who's going to be uh, lethal injection down in, where do they do that? Potosi or Bonterre? I think it's P Bonterre. If you're going to get a lethal injection, then you pretty much know when you're going to die. But other than that, most people do not know their time. See those fish in that net? They didn't know that day was going to be their last day underwater. So as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time, when it falleth suddenly upon them. How does a guy throw, how does a, guy throw a net? And quickly they draw the net up, and catch all of those fish in there. Because fish are pretty fast underwater, aren't they? They're pretty fast at moving in their own habitat. They're, they're pretty fast at it. But the net is faster. And what God is telling you here through Solomon is you better keep your mind and your heart Right with God at all times. Because an evil time will come upon you. I, I don't know who uh, put up the, well I guess I did. The smoke detectors in our house. But I'm sure glad they were there. Why would I put smoke detectors in my house? To detect smoke. And it worked. It worked. Because an evil time came. An evil time came. And had it not been... For those smoke detectors going off. Some of us may have died simply from the smoke inhalation. Because it was getting bad. When we first got up and were getting out. It, it you know, I was, I was walking through the house to get out on the porch. We're making sure that Lindsay and the kids were the, out there. Caleb's out there. Lisa's there. And then I'm going, I got to get my wallet. And, there, and, and Lindsay's saying, Dad, don't go back in there. It's worse now. But I thought, I got to get stuff. And when I went back in, it was much worse. And I'm talking in the course of a minute. It was much worse. Okay? Listen, I'm tell, here's what I'm telling you. There are devils out there who, who's ever... Jaden, that is enough. Get up in that pew and sit down. Um, there is there there are devils who will use people to bring about an evil time to catch you in a snare. Okay, now. You want my opinion? I was talking about my phone a while ago. I think the digital age is setting us up. I absolutely think that. Setting us up for a new world order. For a new, whole new way of life. 
for data and information. For data and information that will bring people to want whatever they're going to stick in you, whatever that is, to connect everybody in this world, that's, the, that's a trap. That's a, that's a net. Okay? Think, yeah, that, that just occurred to me. That's the net. The worldwide what? What do spiders weave? Webs. And what do they use them for? To catch things and eat them. Okay? To consume them. When it falleth suddenly upon them. Boy, this Bible's wise, isn't it? Jeremiah 18. This is a, this is a pit. Now, I saw different kinds of pits, some of them without spikes. That's the pit when you want to keep the animal or the person alive. This one has spikes in it. Obviously, whoever or whatever goes into that one is not intended to remain alive. Okay, but who's ever been in a pit before? Jeremiah eighteen twenty two. Let a cry be heard from their houses when thou shalt suddenly thou shalt bring a troop suddenly upon them. For they have digged a pit to take me. And hid snares for my feet. Now, I, I started this out telling you exactly what this verse just told you. So if you don't believe me, believe this. The devil will, has been, and always will. When I say the devil, I mean the devil and all his kingdom. They will always try to get you into a snare, a pit, a net. Always. It won't stop until you're dead and out of here. Let a cry be heard from their houses when, it, when thou shalt bring a troop suddenly upon them. A troop is an army. For they have so... The troop, what's the troop do? The troop starts chasing you. What do you do? Start running. That's their plan, isn't it? They want you to run to fall into their... For they have digged a pit to take me and hid snares for my feet. If the pit don't work, the snares will. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I can look at my life and tell you the number of pits and snares that God has rescued me from. Me. And you too. Amen. Jeremiah 48, 43. Fear and the pit and the snare shall be upon thee, O inhabitant of Moab, saith the Lord. By the way, the fear of... I got this coming up. What's the f fear of man? Huh? Well, we'll get there. Okay? Uh, there it is. The fear of man bringeth... A snare. Okay. Now let me. Let me. It does, doesn't it? Okay. If I'm. If I'm preaching and I'm afraid. Of somebody here. 
And then I won't preach what I'm supposed to. Um, I'll tell the story. I've told it several times. It, it was um, the first King James Bible conference I ever did. It was uh, for my grandmother's church, my mom's mom. And um, this pastor, he... Uh, he, he had heard of me knew, me, knew me, and we talked on the phone for a while, and he said, well, you, he said, I'm trying to get my church to follow the King James, but they've got NIV Pew Bibles, and he said, I, I need, you know, will you come, and will you really try to, you know, g give it to them, and, and give them lessons in it, and, and, and show them how wrong these Bibles are. I said, be glad to do it. And I remember praying before I ever went down there. God, please don't let me lie. Please don't let me tell something that's not true. I mean, that's the first time. This was the first conference I ever did. So I went down there and did some of the early stuff that I used to do. Um, and did a couple days and, and nights. Did a day conference on a Saturday. And... Um, Got to love the preacher and his wife, you know, and, and the, some of the people there, very friendly people. But, and that was to my face. A f uh, few weeks after I left, that preacher called me and told me what had happened. He said, brother, he said, I need you to pray for me. I said, what happened? And he said, um, on Sunday nights, I've been doing things, you know, on the King James Bible. And he said, this afternoon, they brought in our deacons committee. Now, this is a church, probably, maybe, maybe, 90 to 100 people in this church. They had 17 deacons at this meeting. <laughs> Dug them up, got them out of the nursing home, whatever, I don't know. But they had a meeting on him and, and did not allow him inside the room. Now, I, I want you to know, just, I love you, but that's illegal here. That's against the church bylaws. And it's been tried. While I was in Kenya, it's been tried. Okay? And I appreciate Brother Sterling standing up for it. But anyway, they had a meeting on him, and then they called him in, sat him down, and they said, we're, we're telling you right now, we want you to stop this stuff on the King James that you're giving us every Sunday night. We're not changing the Pew Bibles. We're going to leave them the NIV, and it's either that or we terminate you. So he agreed to their terms. And my heart sunk when I heard that. And I love the man. I've prayed for him. I don't, I don't like judging guys. That could have just as well been me. I mean, you're talking about, you're talking about a man's income. That's his trade. Okay, he's a preacher. What's he going to do when they fire him from his job? And they were going to fire him. But now he's in a snare now at that church. Over the fear of men. And after a while, he finally did leave that church. And I was glad to hear that. I caught up with him, went, had a Southwest Radio conference down in Little Rock. And he was there, and I was glad to see him. He's pastor in another church. Uh, praise the Lord. Glad. So I put no judgment on him. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Now you listen to me. Okay? There's more than one way to have a fear of man. It's not just preachers being afraid of a congregation they're preaching to. Okay? 
Um, it is it is fearing fearing our government. We uh, listen. I I believe that the government, for the most part, has taken down the Sicilian Mafia and taken it over. Who believes that Hillary Clinton has made backdoor deals with other nations to put money in her own pocket? Who believes that about Joe Biden? Who believes that? I mean, there's Republicans that have done it. And that's got them all snared. China's got them snared. That's why nobody stood up for this election. China's got them all trapped. China and maybe the CIA, maybe other nations. Who knows? But I am, I am convinced that a majority of government people, elected officials, are mobsters. I hate saying that. I hate saying it. I love my country. And I want to be patriotic. But I believe they steal and kill. Just like, just like the mafia would. Okay? La Cosa Nostra. That's what I was trying to think of. La Cosa Nostra is the true Sicilian Mafia. And what La Cosa Nostra means is this, this thing of ours. Okay? I, I don't know exactly what that means other than this thing is ours. We take what we want. Okay? But anyway, I... I that's what I believe. Okay? And don't fear government. Respect officers. If they pull you over, respect. Give them respect. But don't be afraid of them. Okay? Don't be afraid of them. The two of them are not... You can do both. You can not... Have a fear of them, but respect them at the same time. Whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. You believe that? that that's going to come to a reality. One of, the, one of these days, that's going to come up to you, and you're going to have to trust in the Lord. Uh, take Exodus 34, 12. Take, watch this now. I know it's, it's after 4 o'clock, but I got, and I got to quit because Lisa's got to go give some medicine to Sterling, but... Exodus 34, 12, and we'll make a point and I'll quit. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. Now this is Exodus 34. This is when God is giving Moses the Ten Commandments. And he's telling him, you guys take heed to yourself. When you get into that land, do not make a covenant with any of those people. Because if you do, it'll be a snare under you. It'll be a trap. So then he says it again, Deuteronomy 7, 16. Thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. God intended to kill every living human being, man, woman, and child in Canaan land. Every one of them. Uh, which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eyes shall have no pity upon them. Neither shalt thou serve their gods. For that will be a snare unto thee. Deuteronomy 12.30 Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. Now watch this. By following them, after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, how did these nations serve their gods? In other words, I want to learn about their religion. Even so will I do likewise. Right now, every uh, conservative or Hasidic Jew follows 
a branch of Satan worship called Kabbalah. It is the same religion that the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Sumerians, the Babylonians, the Moabites, the Ammonites, it is the exact same religion that they went in and learned when God told them specifically, don't do that. And I mean it. Every Jewish synagogue is based upon Jewish mysticism called the Kabbalah. Those people are so lost, very lost and very blind, that you pray for them. Amen? All right, I got to stop. Sterling, time to get some medicine. Do your own study. And if you want me to, to uh, finish this up next Sunday night, I will. I don't have a problem changing things up every now and then. But I want, you to, I want you to think about now, when Paul said, walk circumspectly, he meant it. Okay? How does a soldier walk through a front line? How does he do it? I know back in the 1700s, they just walked straight. They don't tell you to do that anymore in the army, do they? No, they tell you. Circumspect. Look around. There's a trap somewhere waiting for you. Let's stand. Let's pray.